Before I jump into anything, I just wanted to make a couple of callouts. Um, first off, I apologize if you hear the loud noise in the background. There is a dryer going off right now. Um, for anybody who is curious, just because I know I would be, this is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus plugged directly into the Zoom H1n, and I was fortunate enough to be able to get it about three inches away from my face, so pretty close there. Um, I'm going to try to drown out the background noise with some subtle music that will either keep you super engaged or probably put you to sleep, maybe cause you to back out of the video. Um, outside of that, I just wanted to kind of claim the obligatory preface of the fact that I am not a professional colorist, nor do I claim to be. This is really just all my taste and how I see things, um, and mostly just because I nerd out myself on YouTube to people's color grading process, so if you are like me, then here you go. Um, I'm really just going to be super quick, honestly, kind of fly through this, um, but this is honestly how I would color grade this particular clip, and that's actually how I did, so I'm just going to be reconstructing what I already did, and just jumping right in, you could already see my setup here in the corner. I usually like to start with Magic Bullet Looks. And so I'll kind of just drop that on and jump in to try to pick a overlay. Um, and this is obviously going to act as our LUT. I usually have a pretty close affinity for this cluster of Fujifilm film stocks. Um, and just to explain why I chose the one that I did, um, for this particular clip, I just wanted it to be a little bit more um, contrasty. I didn't want these shadows to be too washed out as a lot of these overlays do um, and so that immediately took this guy out of the game because you could see jumping from here to here how washed out those shadows are and that is something we can adjust later but I really just wanted a good base from the get-go and so between these two here um, I ended up landing on F64D um, simply because if you play if you pay closer attention to her face um, I like what 64D um, did to the midtones. Um, it just kind of warmed up her face a little bit more. Um, didn't accentuate so much of the shadows to show age and things of that nature. Um, and I just kind of like the overall look. I'll then jump into color wheels and move it up top. If you don't already know why I would do that, I'll kind of get to that in a moment. Um, but... From here, I'll kind of just start to dial in my exposure to my liking with the LUT already applied. Um, and so usually I'll kind of just start to move these sliders. I do like to bring up my scopes um, just to be able to scope out, no pun intended, that was extremely terrible, just to be able to scope out um, which particular parts of my image are being affected as well as what that corresponds to. Um, just to the waves here and so I usually just kind of go pretty extreme um, just to kind of see again what parts of the image are being affected and I'll usually land somewhere right before any of uh, the shadows or midtones are being crushed exactly to zero um, from there I'll kind of just close this temporarily um, and start to work on some saturation I do my saturation a little bit differently, but before I jump into that, I kind of just wanted to jump back and show you guys why I put my color wheels up top now that I've made some adjustments. If I move it below um, the LUT, as we're calling it, you'll see that it affects the image differently um, than if it were before. And so obviously that just means that these are operating or working like, um, or much like layers do in Photoshop if you're familiar with that. Um, it will affect what's beneath it and so um, with this I usually like to have the closest to raw if you will of my exposure uh, because this would be first before anything else is applied that means I'm affecting the actual image in terms of exposure and then the LUT is being applied um, versus the LUT being applied and then me trying to adjust this super washed out image um, if that makes sense great if not this is why I'm not a teacher um, from here 
going into the saturation like I mentioned I'll do it a little bit differently than some I suppose um, I like to honestly really pull in a lot of saturation for my highlights um, and again just to feel um, just to like I guess my taste you know what I mean um, I'm just kind of going back and forth I, I kind of really like living around just a little bit more than half here um, and so we'll kind of go ahead and leave that there in my midtones usually I like for them to match my highlights but you'll see and I just remember this from this clip when I do that to me that looks a little bit overdone and so I believe I just cut that in half and did um, 1.25 and I use the kind of numbers a lot mostly just because of OCD but it does help me dial in the image um, at least to my liking and that left me here um, and so something that I'll usually do a little bit more often than I did um, I guess in this ramble is check back and forth to see where we started and where we are at now and so I'm really digging the tones that I was able to pull out of this um, and just to give a quick little breakdown of this I'm not entirely pleased with this image and I'll explain why um, but you'll notice from here to here we're bringing it out um, we're bringing out a lot more of those cool tones and those are actually natural cool tones being cast from the TV that is on the wall here um, and what I really wanted to do was just kind of have that half light from the Christmas tree lights um, and leave it at that but for whatever reason I decided to add this backlight which I actually don't like for a couple of reasons primarily because I just didn't dim it and I should have um, you can see it's pretty hot here but the other thing that it does that I don't like is it really casts a lot of bounce here um, which kind of just flattens the image a little bit um, I don't think it adds too much depth I think it takes away from the depth a little bit if this was shaded um, I feel like that would have been a little bit better so really I should have just dimmed this backlight here or hair light so that it was really just kind of this golden cast here um, and, and not had it so high and not had it so hot either um, but that's why I kind of set these things up just to kind of um, practice and learn those types of things but um, yeah I guess that's kind of the breakdown of the shot um, I primarily just went into that just to explain the cool tones um, in this kind of bottom corner here and I guess that's where we'll leave it if you enjoyed this super cool if not please let me know or don't feedback is always cool um, if you guys have any tips or guidance um, or anything you would have done differently I would definitely love to hear in the comments um, this was just a quick breakthrough or breakdown I guess run through mixing up words um, with magic bullet looks I do also regularly use film convert nitrate now that they have it for Final Cut Pro um, but for this particular guy, I, I usually jump back and forth between those two depending on the clip, um, depending on the footage. Um, and so, yeah, here you guys go. Have a great wherever you are. I don't even know if that makes sense.